Hello and welcome to Northwest Air Guns. Uh, what we have here is my new, to me, 60-year-old Logan lathe. It's a model 1957, 11-inch uh, swing with uh, 36 inches between centers. I moved recently and wasn't able to bring my shop with me, so I have been uh, lathe-less. And once you don't have a lathe, just about any project you do is hard. So I found this one on Craigslist and brought it home. And right now it's uh, in my garage, um, getting ready to get set up. You know, you see posts on the internet forums from time to time uh, where people ask what kind of lathe to buy uh, or what to look for in a lathe that's going to be used for air gun work. So, as an air gunner, who's had uh, several older lathes over the years, uh, I thought some of you might be interested in what I was looking for. Uh, you know, what features were important to me uh, for an air gunsmith type lathe. Now, if your lathe is new, you don't have very many worries because any problem that you may have uh, will probably be covered under warranty. But for older lathes like this one, uh, the warranties expired, you know, 60 years ago. Um, so you're on your own, basically, other than what you can glean from the Internet. Um, all I can tell you is buyer beware. What I'm going to do is go over here uh, real quickly what types of features that I was looking for uh, in a lathe that I could use for air gun work. And then um, I thought we'd look at some of the tests that I use or some of the uh, different ways I evaluate whether the lathe is worn out or um, has some potential to still do good work. You know, I debated whether to uh, talk about how I got this machine home, but, you know, moving these things are kind of important too. And this particular one, if I can show you here, it's strapped and um, also bolted here to the uh, to the little trailer, and this little trailer's um, not street legal, so I couldn't just hook up to the trailer and haul it home. But I thought, well, it's on the little trailer. What we'll do is uh, I'll rent a bigger trailer five foot wide and we'll roll the little trailer on there and cinch it down good um, and then take it home. And then once we got to the garage here, by taking it back off would be a piece of cake too. But um, reality interfered when it turned out the little trailer was about four inches too narrow, or too wide rather, to fit onto the big trailer. And we could have taken the tires off, but that would have defeated the whole idea of the easy loading. So I went back to the trailer rental place and traded for a bigger trailer, uh, this time a six foot wide one, and it was getting dark. I didn't pay too much attention. Well, it turned out that the opening on the big trailer uh, was still too narrow for this little trailer to fit on there. So then, uh, you can see here, the tires came off, and we used to come along to drag this little uh, trailer up onto the big trailer, and that's how, that's how we got it loaded. And then uh, when I got home here, I used to uh, come along uh, to unload it again. I dragged it off of the big trailer, and I, what I did is I hooked it up with a chain to that uh, steel column in the garage that keeps you from driving into your water heater with your car. Uh, interesting that uh, I had to borrow a come along from my neighbor because none of the hardware stores or auto parts stores, none of the kids working there knew what a come along was. So here it sits, waiting to be cleaned up and put back to work. All right, well, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the features uh, that I was looking for in a lathe. And the first and foremost was the uh, large spindle. And this thing is uh, big enough to handle stock up to an inch and three-eighths. And 
uh, what happens is uh, you get tired when you have a small spindle. I have another Logan that's uh, three quarters of an inch. And every time you do anything over that, you have to get a steady rest or that type of thing. So this eliminates that. I can just put the stock right in there and check it up and work with it. It's way more convenient. And the other thing is that this chuck here will take the 5C collets. So if I ever wanted to do uh, work with collets, uh, you know, I'll have to make a draw bar, and, uh, spindle nose protector and the uh, adapter here. But uh, I could use 5C collets. Usually 5C collets, are, you know, if you're doing a one-off or something, you don't need them too much. But uh, they are pretty handy for precision work and for uh, repeating. Like if you're going to make a well, five or ten of the same part, they'd be pretty handy. So that was a good feature, the size of the spindle hole. Okay, well, another nice feature about this uh, lathe that I was looking for in a lathe was it's got a relatively short headstock from here to that end of the spindle is only 13 inches. So if you're doing barrel work, um, you can chuck it up here and you know you can make you know, a centering device for this end. I've heard them called a spider, I've heard them called a cat's head, but you can make a, something for this end to center that end of, the, of your work and center this end. So let's say you're uh, uh, putting a new crown on a barrel or something like that and it's sticking out here. Well, the barrel can be um, attached here and centered as well. It'll give you a little bit better, uh, maybe better uh, cut on your uh, crown. If you don't have it, then, you know, a long headstock and you chuck something up here, it's going to be rattling around in there. You might have to stuff something in there to kind of hold it steady. So that was a, a nice feature for me. And you can see here also, this is, these are not very good shape, but it is belt driven and I prefer uh, you know, this is a preference, not a requirement, but I prefer uh, the, the old belt driven. In fact, it'd be even better if it had the old flat belts. Uh, but this is a V-belt here, and they, you know, they're a little bit smoother, I think, and, and a little bit quieter than uh, gearhead uh, type lathes. And if you've never had a belt driven lathe, and all your lathes have been uh, gearhead, you don't have back gears. These old lathes that are belt driven uh, have back gears that you engage when you need more power or need to go a little slower. One other thing that was a requirement for me was uh, to have a quick change gearbox so that you can change, uh, like if you're going to be threading on here, you can change the thread pretty easily, uh, at, at least, you know, maybe not for metric, but uh, it's very simple. You can change the speeds of your uh, lead screw, so your lead screw would, would either feed the work faster or slower. That's all nice stuff, so I wanted to, to make sure I got one of these with the lathe, and if you don't have a quick change gearbox like this, then all these gears over here, you've got to change a whole train uh, of gears there to, to get your, uh, you know, the desired speed or, or the thread that you want, and that's just a, you know, it's a pain to have to do that every time. One other thing that uh, was important to me was having a, a fairly long bed, and you can see that you got 36 inches between centers. It's, it just makes it more pleasant. You can uh, work without being all crammed in, and uh, I mean, it's like having, after working on that 17-inch uh, lathe, this is, well, this is like. Uh, wide open spaces, you know, lots of room. And you know, one other thing I thought was interesting here, and I'm not sure if it's a, a plus or not, and maybe if somebody out there sees it, you can tell me, but um, I think the Logan catalog showed this as some sort of a leveling screw. And I'm not sure I'll have to play with it and see if it does any, you know, level. Uh, rather than use shims or something like that, but that's that's a nice feature too if it's uh, if that's what it is. And then finally, just looking at the overall uh, package here, um, it's a good sized lathe. It's as big as anything that you're going to need for air gun or gunsmithing or 
almost any kind of work that I could conceive of doing out here in the garage. But it's not that big either, and it just takes up the space that's occupied by the cabinet itself, which is kind of nice. Uh, I think this is an ideal size. You know, if you have the space for it, this or the South Bend Heavy Tan, some of the uh, Clossings are about this size as well. Rockwell had one. Uh, and these are great because they're not too big for the home shop guy, uh, but they're big enough to do uh, the kind of work that you might run into. Now, if you're short of space and you're making smaller parts, uh, then a mini lathe might be best for you. Uh, but over the years, I've always seemed to need a bigger lathe more than I needed the space. One last thing I want to mention about features. Uh, this actually was sold through a Montgomery Wards back in 1955 uh, down in Southern California. And I got that information from Logan Lathe, who still has uh, those records. So if you did want to look up, if you have a Logan Lathe and you wanted to look up the history, you can get at least the, the starting point. So this has the original, I think, Montgomery Ward's uh, motor on it. And uh, it's important to check with the motor, make sure that it's uh, single phase, or if you want three phase, that's fine, but just be aware that single phase, you can usually run 110 or 220, whichever you prefer. But if it's three phase, you're gonna get a phase converter or a variable frequency drive or something to run it. And, uh, you know, I kind of found that out the hard way because I did have a three-phase motor and it kept overheating and uh, shutting down and then I have to wait till it cooled off, do a little bit more work and uh, I did that for a while until I figured out what was going on. But just something to keep in mind if you're looking at one of these older lathes, uh, it's possible that it has a three-phase motor rather than one phase. Okay, I just wanted to mention one thing that um, was important to me that I didn't get. And that's uh, a non-threaded spindle. It could be a LOO or a, a cam lock style, whatever, uh, would have been preferable to this because, because when you get the threaded spindle, you screw the chuck on. And that means if you go in reverse, that chuck has the potential of um, coming off. And then it pulls down on your foot or bangs under the floor and hits something else and and those are all bad things so I would have preferred it I might have even paid a little bit more money but uh, with all the other features this had that I was looking for I'm willing to accept the uh, threaded spindle with it <laughs>